Hello and welcome. We are presenting to you the strategic marketing plan for Stonewood's new product, Stonewood Zero Alcohol. We are Group 1. Beatrice will present the background and the new product. Giovanni will explain to you the internal and external environmental factors and the competitors. Marie will get you through the strategic marketing mix. Sophie will explain to you the cost breakdown and lastly, Elizabeth will point out the changes necessary in the currently marketing strategy. Stonewood was founded in 2008 in Barrow Bay by three friends and today is currently Australia's second largest independent craft beer brewing enterprise. It is a B Corp certified, which shows their commitment with sustainability. Currently, Stonewood's offer 18 different beers as well as clothing and giftware. The company produces roughly 12 million litres of beer annually and the revenue is estimated uh, for this year of 2021 is around $100 million. To catch up with the consumer's change of behaviour, Stonewood is presenting the new Stonewood Zero Alcohol. The consumption of non-alcoholic beverage has increased in the past few years. This increase has been driven by health issues such as strong medication use, safety issues and pregnancy. A variety of flavor beers such as lemon, raspberry, cherry and peach will be offered as well as the standard traditional lager flavor. So now let's talk about the internal and external environment factors. Um, in regards of the SWOT as a strand, the company has a strong social media presence on Facebook and Instagram and is also a well-established brand in Australia with over 13 years of experience. Something that is part of internal and external, um, as extreme, stone and wood bottles are made um, from 50 to 70% recycled material. And as an external uh, point of view, uh, this is pretty good because new government laws are being uh, request more and more to those industry to be more sustainable and Stonywood is on the right way to it. Um, social cultural changing lifestyles in regards of the consumption of alcohol. Uh, more people are being more interested in known alcoholic drinks lately. And the last but not least, in regards of economic, at the same time the growth of the craft beer in Australia has uh, rise. COVID-19 has decreased industry revenue to the closure of hospitality establishments. So now let's talk about the main competitors of Stonewood. Um, in the industry market competitor, being in the craft beer, we have Balter. So Balter uh, offers the Captain Sensible with 3.5% of alcohol. And the main direct competitor for Stonewood, it's Calton Zero. Calton Zero does also provide 0% of alcohol, same as this new range of the Stonewood Zero. But the big difference between them is because Calton Zero does offer this option of beer, where as an advantage in Stonywood range of um, Stonywood Zero offers at least four different flavors of beer. Hi there, my name is Mirka and today I'm going to present you the strategic marketing mix. Um, so this one is going to include the product strategy, which, which is basically going to explain how we're going to take that product to the market. The pricing strategy is going to explain all the different techniques and tactics that we'll be using. The place and supplier strategy is basically highlighting the process and how we can optimize this. And finally, we'll talk about the channels that we are wanting to use in this strategy with that product. So starting off with the product strategy. So the approach we want to take is being really customer centric, so understanding their needs and adapting to those. The uh, person that we're trying to reach is anyone over 18 years old. Because we're selling non-alcoholic drinks, we are targeting pregnant women, people that have heavy medications or have specific religions. Why are we so special? We know that many brands sell low alcohol beers or any other drinks, but they don't actually do non-alcoholic -alcohol beers. So that's why we want to be different. And our products are all made out of re recycled material. So we are an eco-friendly company and Big Pop certified as um, shown on our website. So moving forward with this product, we'll be using a different um, color palette. So based on different taste of the products, we'll have a lemon, raspberry, sherry and peach um, taste. Now to take this product to the market, we're going to have to use different pricing strategies. 
So what we want to be doing is a market-based pricing strategy as well as a consumer-based pricing strategy. Basically, one is more focused on competitors and what strategy they're using, as opposed to the other one is more based on the budget of our customers and what they can afford and what their needs are. Now, to take it to the market, we're going to have to give different offers. Um, so some of them will be based on the events that are happening in Australia, for example, Dry July, or we'll give as well some bundle prices or random discounts. So comparing with the biggest competitor, which is Carlton Zero, we don't want to offer any lower prices than they do, but we want to give more value and this is going to have to be more quantity. So on the right here, we can see the different prices for each bottle. So for example, the single unit is going to be 2.79 Australian dollars for a bottle of 375. Now, something that is really important to consider is that when we bring a new product to the market, we need to look at the process that is in place and how we can optimize that one. So we know that at the moment with alcoholic drinks, this only requires four ingredients, those ones being water, malt, hops, and yeast. Now moving forward with the non-alcoholic drinks, we know that it's going to require a little bit more ingredients to that. However, we know that the costs are going to be super, super low. So the opportunity here is to get more breweries around Australia. So this would help us getting the customers coming straight away to the brewery as opposed to them having to do any delivery which are too far away. Because at the moment, Stone and Wood cannot cover everything in Australia, and that's how we could improve this moving forward. And that also includes how we can optimize the process and improve technically to be always better at what we're doing. So moving forward with that strategy, now we need to consider where we would want to advertise this new product. Thinking about our persona, this is how we base that strategy. We need to know where they are living, on which platform, at what time, and what content do they enjoy. So to do, to do that, we have thought about three different channels or techniques, one being SEO, the other one being SMM, and then user-generated content. So what we want to do here is that we don't want to be dependent on one of those platforms. So starting off with the SEO, SEO will be done to increase visibility in the search results. So whenever someone looks for non-alcoholic drinks, we want to be the first ones in the results. And to do so, we're going to be using pillar clusters strategies where we have blog posts linked to a master pillar piece. And this is how we're going to generate um, more visibility on our website. Secondly, using the user-generated content, this is where we want to create social proof and trust with the user. So a review says that 70% of consumers trust online peer review. We think that it's the only way that we're going to be able to trust to, to create trust with the user and let them think that it, it is as tasty as a peer or even more than that. For the platforms, we want to be using TikTok and Instagram um, just because we think that's where our influencers live. So as an example of who we could be using, we've got Laura Wells and we've got Erin Rhodes. Now, as I said, we thought about where our customers, our potential customers would live. Now, this is why we decided to use TikTok and Facebook, because we know that we can reach much younger audiences. And there is a lot of topics around healthcare, health, um, healthy topics and how people really care about it. So that's where we think we could um, pick up more customers. Now, in some of them, for example, Facebook, we want to use a full funnel strategy where we create awareness. We create re-engagement and then we retarget them and ultimately the goal is to get them to buy the product. So we'll talk more in detail about the timeline that we've chosen for this product launch, but just as a quick overview in terms of the duration and quantity, for the SEO part, we want to be doing SEO for nine months at least, so that would be until the quarter number two, three. Then we want to post 18 blog posts plus two on-page and off-page optimizations, as I said previously. For the user-generated content, we want to focus on three different influencers that we are going to be really picky with because it's going to be based on their interest and what they care about. We're going to have to do this for six months. And in regards to the social media marketing, we want to have three different ads, um, so sets of ads which are using different formats. And this is going to go for six months as well until the quarter number two. Here we have our cost breakdowns. Firstly, we have our startup costs. These are items we'll need to get our new product process started to avoid cross-contamination. Some items include a brewer, packaging, and a cool room, 
there are also going to be six new staff until an expansion is needed. Due to meeting financial requirements, we have decided to change the price of our six pack and 24 carton. Our six pack is now $15 and our 24 carton is $50. These prices may change in the future once we have established a strong brand reputation. It also gives us a little bit of wiggle room for any unexpected issues. We have worked out and looked at competitors as well as industry research that it will cost us $4 per litre to make the product. From industry research, sales of non-alcoholic beer are expected to increase by 4% until 2024. The industry is unknown beyond that point, but then we have estimated that it will continue to increase. Our profit margin is based on the $4 per litre as mentioned earlier. We have worked out that single units will receive the highest profit margin of 46.9% as the price can be marked up. A six pack will receive a profit margin of 40.12% while the 24 carton is 27.93%. These are all still really good profit margins for this product. Finally, we have our break even and return on investment. As you can see, we have done years one to four at a 4% increase, while tier five will be increased to 6% as the industry is expected to grow. To break even in the first year, we need to sell $990,000 worth of product to make up startup costs. Research has shown that Aussies prefer six packs, then 24 cartons, then individual. To break even, 60% of sales need to be six packs, 35% 24 cartons, and 5% individual. Now, obviously, these can change. Our return on investment is sitting at 19.24% over five years based on the previous figures. This equates to 3.5% annually. Stone & Wood's current marketing strategy accommodates for multiple segments, including some of those discovered as being key for our new product. Much like the company's current low alcohol beer East Point, Zero's overall position in the market is to be the go-to drink for those who like the taste of beer but advocate for a more health-focused and balanced lifestyle. Zero will therefore in part be in addition to the company's current no-low strategy. Currently, East Point is a major sponsor at local athletic events and the feature drink at sponsored community and charity initiatives, and Zero will be in addition to this. However, while product positioning is similar, as a completely non-alcoholic product, Zero segmentation is extended and also speaks to consumers who, for both personal and medical reasons, cannot and do not choose to consume any alcohol. For this reason, Stone & Wood's current strategy will need to be expanded in order to help reach this audience. Due to the volatility of COVID-19, ongoing restrictions and lockdowns worldwide, the key change to Stone & Wood's current strategy will be to focus all immediate marketing efforts and resources on digital communications. Social media in particular has grown in usage by 30% during COVID-19, and millennials, our key target market, are the heaviest users of the two largest social platforms in the world, Facebook and Instagram. While the company's current strategy already involves the use of these channels, refining content and encouraging more engagement through active two-way communication and user-generated content will help quickly strengthen Zero's brand awareness as it enters the market, while also growing the brand's pre-existing customer relationships and boosting loyalty. As we note, the impacts of lockdown laws also means a large portion of establishments where stone and wood is currently sold are not operating as usual. This means adjusting the strategy to increase web traffic through implementing blogs and optimizing SEO will aim to direct customers to the online store. Also, adding value-aligned influencers to the strategy and posting user-generated content will aim to fill the gap of authentic communications left by the decrease in face-to-face -face sales. This will be our catalyst for building brand awareness and trust while navigating these murky waters. TikTok will be the newest social media addition to the company's current strategy predicted to reach 1.2 billion active users in 2021, and with 40% of users found to be millennials, it's a sure opportunity for Zero and the company as a whole to show its personality and expand reach. And finally, the last adjustment will include spending initial marketing time on A-B testing. This will ensure paid ads on our key social platforms like Facebook are optimized to allow Stone & Wood to get more bang for their buck when it comes time to advertise Zero. Thank you for listening to our presentation and we look forward to hopefully being able to produce this product in the future.